Why does it feel like we never reach balance in our lives and why that's healthy? Rhythm is the reality. Work-life balance is the myth. Hey everyone, Mazin here. Welcome to the Maximal Life. Have you ever felt guilty or beat yourself up for not striking a better balance between work and your personal life? Well, don't. First of all, beating ourselves up is not a solution. Creating solutions require creative energy and feeling guilty simply does not produce the type of energy that results in creativity. Second of all, the concept of balance is widely misused and extremely overrated. When you actually consider the meaning of the word balance, applying it to how we live our lives is simply unrealistic. Imagine a tightrope walker standing on a platform 50 feet in the air. Stretched out before him is a piece of rope no more than a couple inches thick. He steps carefully out into the rope with nothing between him and the concrete below he only hears his own heart pounding in the gasping crowd. He makes his way out into the rope with his arms stretched to counter his weight. His body is constantly shifting slightly more to the left and then to the right as he simultaneously moves forward across the length of the rope. Is he in perfect balance the entire time? No. If he was in perfect balance, he would have just walked straight across from one end of the rope to the other without any effort at all. Instead, this amazing feat is more like a dance, and to prevent a deadly descent to the ground below, he must maintain his rhythm. First, a bit to the left, and then a bit to the right, continuously and carefully shifting, recentering, adjusting, and all the while, pressing forward, maintaining momentum. His moment of perfect balance happens only in split seconds and the rest of the time he's ebbing and flowing with the minute vibrations of the rope of his living, breathing body and even the air molecules that surround him. Some would say he has mastered the art of balance, but it is far more accurate to say he has mastered the art of rhythm. In today's culture, the world balance is widely taught as a virtue to be strived for. We are told we need to find balance between our work life and our home life, balance between time we spend with family and time we spend with friends, balance with food, balance with exercise, balance emotions, balance energy, and even balance spirituality. The concept of having balance has been overused to the point of exhaustion. For the most part, we all really seem to know about balance is that we're supposed to want it. Most of the time we don't have it and we should feel guilty about not being part of and having and to keep that balance. Balance is unrealistic expectation that has been twisted and perpetuated by culture conditioning to keep us striving towards an unattainable ideal. Unattainable ideals create insatiable needs, and when we are insatiable, we consume more than necessary. And that's in that state, we are more likely to spend our money on things we do not need. Balance, when being applied to how we live our lives, is a total myth. Let's debunk the myth of balance right here, right now. Balance is not a noun, unless you're referring to the amount in your bank account. Balance is mainly a verb. Balance is what happens when, for a brief moment in time, one part of something is evenly offset with a counterpart. The result of true balance is stillness. Don't get me wrong, stillness has its place. Physical stillness can be great for renewing energy, such as when we're asleep. Meditation is a state of mental and emotional stillness and can be a gateway to deep self-reflection and obtaining greater insight. I'm all for a little strategic stillness now and then. But the truth is, when we think we are being still, we are still moving. Life is a rhythmic state of being. Our lungs are breathing at a rhythm. Our blood is coursing to a rhythm. And our cells are dividing at a rhythm. We are alive. We are fluid. We are rhythmic. I can try balancing perfectly still on one leg. And I'll probably succeed for a few seconds, maybe more but I cannot do it forever, and there is not much I can accomplish while standing on one leg. 
Think of a scale. When a scale is in perfect balance, nothing is happening. There is no movement, no dynamic, no vibrancy. No movement, dynamic, or vibrancy means no life. Finding balance in life is a short-sighted metaphor. When we feel like our energy is off, it is not because our lives are out of balance. Out of balance is such an outdated mentality. Being out of balance doesn't actually mean anything except that you are alive. And yet, thanks to culture conditioning, just hearing the phrase, I'm out of balance, can instantly produce feelings of guilt. Why should we feel guilty for not finding balance? Finding balance means finding the middle and staying there. How is that conducive to living the maximal life? Spoiler alert, it is not. As maximal achievers, we strive for excellence. We play the long game, and like a pro athlete training in intervals. We're masters of rhythm. Testing out one way and then the next, keeping what works and discarding what isn't serving us. As we continue to press ever forward, maintaining momentum. Geniuses aren't balanced. Geniuses maximize the benefits of the ups and the downs inside the rhythm of life. Rather, the true geniuses amongst us always seemed more like the tightrope walkers, continuously shifting on a precarious edge of wild ideas and true brilliance. Ever has it been that the most impactful and groundbreaking individuals amongst us were thought to be crazy, unbalanced? That is, until everyone realized they were geniuses. If the Wright brothers were balanced, we wouldn't have airplanes. If Einstein was balanced, we wouldn't have the theory of relativity. If Van Gogh was balanced, we wouldn't have Starry Night. If Job was balanced, we wouldn't have the iPhone. Our body is a reporter, and when the report indicates that our energy is off, it isn't because we need to seek balance. Balance is for scales, numbers, tires, and spreadsheets. We are not robots. Human beings are dynamic and rhythmic. When our bodies report shortage in, con in connection or lack of energy, it means we need to get back into our natural rhythm. What is our natural rhythm? We know that all human beings pulse and cycle through rhythm. Our circadian rhythms are the biological reset process that we all experience every 24 hours. Our ultradian rhythm are the natural dip in top performance that occurs every 60 to 90 minutes. At UMAXA, we maximize our productivity by taking 10 to 15 minute recovery breaks after every 90 minutes of intense focus to avoid burnout. The results we experience from honoring the ancient wisdom of the ultradian rhythm has been tremendous and unanimous. In getting back into your natural rhythm, there is a bit more than what is biologically unanimous. So let's get into that right here, right now. People are not uniform, and we are all unique. We determine in a great deal of what constitutes our own natural rhythm because it must suit our individual lifestyles. When it comes to the outdated, short-sighted metaphor of finding balance in life, a great deal of guilt is heaped, particularly on the concept of finding balance with our work lives and our family lives. And it affects many of us most acutely because it literally hits close to home. I love my family above all else. And when I'm not spending enough time with them, my body reports it through irritability, low energy, and lack of enthusiasm. When I receive these reports, I know I need to rearrange my schedule to get home early that night or arrange for a family outing that weekend. That being said, when I ran nine companies, it was not typically realistic for me to spend the equal time of amount at home as I do at work. Balance is unrealistic expectation in this area of my life. But now we know balance in life is unusable metaphor. So I have found a rhythm that is realistic and complements my individual and my family's lifestyle. My wife and I look at our year as a whole. And as we plan our schedule according to the seasons of our life, my workflow naturally increases during August, September, and October, and naturally slows during the month of July and December. Together, we plan our rhythm for when I'll be working more and when I'll be enjoying more time with my family. Regardless of your rhythm and work schedule, I want to encourage you to fully commit to your seasons. People tell me 
all the time that they feel guilty when they are not at home with their family because they are at work. To make matters worse, they also feel guilty when they are not working, when they are at home. Now my friend, I'll be frank with you. A double dose of guilt is a recipe for misery. Instead, when you are focusing on work, realize this is your season to do so. When you are working, commit fully to your work. When you are at home with your family or significant other, commit fully to engaging with them and enjoy your personal time with them. When you live your life in rhythm, there will be times when you have to give yourself to something over and above. Are you balanced when you're starting a business or studying for the board's exam or finishing up your theses or caring for a newborn? No, of course not. You are unbalanced with a purpose as you should be. Those things demand a high level of commitment for a season of your life. Oh no, I'm unbalanced. That's right. Congratulations, you are alive. The key is to realign ourselves as rhythmic beings in rhythmic world, not to make up the impose that is some artificial system like the work-life balance. Let go of the work-life balance restraint today. Look at your year as a whole and come up with ways you can build rhythms of work and rest into your daily, weekly, monthly, and annual schedule. It is far more lasting, powerful, and personalized than the outdated metaphor of balance. So forget balance. Get rhythm. Thank you all for joining me today as we debunk yet another constraint of cultural conditioning. By understanding your own rhythm, planning, and committing to the seasons of your life, you will create flow and rhythm that harmonizes with living the maximal life. If you like what you have seen and heard, please subscribe.